Hey, you know what? Uh, it's a beautiful day out today. Uh, I'm actually uh, starting to reorganize for open water. I know it's still the end of March, but I'm starting to put away some of the ice fishing gear, starting to refocus. There might be another ice fishing trip or two that I'll scoot out on here before we jump into full open water mode because we got some ice in the lakes, right? But I'm getting prepared for open water fishing. It's coming quick. It's going to be here before you know it. And how are we going to attack these bodies of water? I'm going to specifically touch on panfish, predominantly the crappie. Uh, because here we are in Minnesota, at least, we can't really target largemouth bass or walleyes, maybe on some border waters, maybe if I jump over to the Dakotas or into Wisconsin or down into Iowa. But for our specific area, our specific part of the state, we're going to be basically targeting panfish here. So I'm going to touch on crappie, how I'm jumping into this open water transition. I want to touch on tungsten. I want to talk about tungsten because I think tungsten gets used a lot in ice fishing. As ice anglers, we use tungsten all the time. We rely on tungsten to catch more fish. But I think we should rely on tungsten for open water as well. And I don't think we listen to ourselves as ice anglers during the open water season. I'm going to talk to you why. I also want to talk about some storage options and just some things to think about as we jump into the open water realm. Uh, for starters, we're ice fishing. We're just getting done with ice fishing. And we drop tungsten jigs, small jigging spoons, micro finesse plastics. This is what we throw at these fish. This is what we've been doing for the last, I don't know, few months. So why do you want to start the open water season with a big giant crappie tube or a big twister tail, a big minnow bait? These fish are still turning, starting to acclimate into warmer water conditions. They're still eating, for the most part, smaller offerings. They're still gonna eat what we threw at them at late ice. So you'll see me start the open water season with some of the same things I used below the ice. So I still have my tungsten jig box, my ice fishing jig box. I'm still using small, believe it or not, jigging spoons. If I can find situations where I can still use my ice fishing jigging spoons, whether it's a 16th ounce pinhead, I might even jig that over the side of the boat and work fish in some of those basins or, or weed lines, just like I would ice fishing, let's say a week or two or three weeks ago. They'll still eat these exact same offerings. I've caught a lot of fish open water on drop kicks, pinhead minnows, that kind of stuff. The same things I just used to catch them ice fishing, I'll use them same way, open water fishing to start the season. So don't leave those jig boxes in the ice fishing section of your garage. Throw it in your boat, put it in your front pocket. These will catch a lot of fish right away at open water, whether it's jigged over the side of the boat, whether it's underneath the float. You can still use these finesse applications to kind of weasel these fish into biting when open water hits and we're still dealing with 40 some degree water temperatures. It's going to be cold for a while here. The second the ice comes off the lake, these fish are still thinking ice mode. They still need some level of a finesse application. Don't leave these jigs at home. That'd be one of my big pieces of advice. So tungsten, not just ice tungsten, but you have open water tungsten offerings. And why tungsten? Tungsten's heavier than lead. I can get away with a smaller profile, but still keep my bait down in that strike zone. I don't want a bigger, larger, gaudier jig when I'm trying to target these finesse fish. So if I can put a small jig, but has the weight to give me the control and feel, that's an upper hand. That gives you an advantage when you're fishing, not just ice fishing, but open water as well. So you've seen a bunch of some tungsten offerings in the ice fishing world. Uh, Clam has come out with the Drop TG in recent years. It's been around for, oh boy, a half a decade. And we've used them to catch a lot of fish. And they range, have ranged, from 1 16th up to larger game fish sizes. So we've all seen the 1 16th ounce size that we've leaned on a lot for open water crappies. Now, this is, in my opinion, to start the season, relatively large. I'm probably not gonna fish this right away unless I'm chasing basin crappies, main lake crappies, some of these big crappies on lakes like Lake Minnetonka, Clearwater, Forest Lake, there's Waconia, other expansive bodies of water. These fish stay out in the basin all year. You catch them in the winter, you catch them in the summer, you catch them in the spring. That's where maybe a larger presentation will you'll get away with that. But I'm not quite turned into this larger 16th ounce jig just quite yet. This will get a workout, trust me, throughout much of the summer month for a variety of situations. But right now, it might not get my first nod. New for this year is the 32nd ounce drop TG. That is a tungsten jig. Solid, solid, awesome Mustad Ultra Point hook. 
in a 132nd ounce. I'm gonna show you how small this jig just is. And this is exactly what the doctor ordered, in my opinion, for much of these springtime applications. I'll even use this jig probably throughout the entire summer. And I'll show you the size of this. That's what we're dealing with right there. Just a small profile, small body jig head, but it weighs a 132nd ounce. So I can pitch this, I can fish this under a float, I can tip it with the plastic, you can tip it with a live mineral if you want. This is gonna be a very, very versatile option. And it comes in some of the most popular colors, whether it's chartreuse orange, fire tiger, black, gold, blue and white, pink and white, a lot of great options to catch fish. This is gonna be one of my go-tos. In fact, I have Jack, my son from JJ Fishing, tying up some of these jigs as we speak because we're going to talk hair jigs too he's tying up some hair jigs on this tungsten offering for me to play with a very very good choice i think this year i'm excited to put this to work i'm going to catch a lot of fish on this really solid hook it's got that hook keeper on there to hold the plastic or plastic keeper on there sorry to hold the plastics on there good paint job away you go so that's why tungsten in my opinion really excels year round small profile heavier body, heavier weight, gives me the control I need to feel the fish, feel the bite, feel the structure. It also helps you with straight line, feeling things against the wind. There's a lot of reasons to fix tungsten. It nicks off weeds and rocks differently. It, tra it transcends sensitivity and feeling through your line, through your nice carbon fiber or carbon or graphite rod up to your hand. A lot of reasons to fish tungsten, not just for ice fishing, but for open water as well. And there's some good offerings out there to help you catch more fish. That's gonna be something I fish often. Now I touched on hair jigs. Hair jigs work exceptionally well because I'm not dealing with plastics, threading them on straight, I'm not dealing with live bait. I am fishing hair. It, it comes down, depending on the material, it clinches in the water, looks just like a pin minnow. The fish can suck it in. And in certain applications, whether it's marabou, certain kinds of, of flashaboo, certain kinds of hair, they flare out in the water. But a lot of times I'm fishing this just like a little darting minnow. And I'm not tipping this with anything. I'm not tipping this with plastics. I'm not tipping it with live bait. I'm not tipping it with a maggot or waxworm. I am fishing these just like you see. And they just slowly pendle them down the water. And it's a really nice way to fish under a float or casting and pitching. So if you're around some cover and you don't want to use a float and you want to kind of fine tune and, and pitch and spot fish, you can cast these hair jigs nicely into that cover. Or you can fish them under a float and now you can adjust where you want this bait to sit in the strike zone. So a hair jig, I'm a big believer in hair jigs. Jack ties these fairly long, but I can cut them down. I can cut them down to match the presentation I want to fish, match the length of the presentation I want to give these fish to mimic that little pin minnow, maybe flare it up a little more because I got a more aggressive crappie bite and I want to slow it down in the water column. So if you're not fishing some kind of a hair jig, I would heavily encourage you to do so. It will be our go-to this entire spring season. We'll fish hair jigs. I got a bunch of rods already rigged up there uh, with hair jigs on them. I'll fish them under a float or I'll pitch them and work my rod back as that bait swims and pendulums down through cover and back to the boat. So hair jigs are a great way to fish. Storage. I use these slim boxes. These work exceptionally well from Clam Outdoors. I can easily see what's in there. I can open them up. I can position my jigs however I want. And again, I can see what's inside every one of these. I can beat them up, they don't fall out. I can put them in, they're slim, slender in profile. They're called the slim box, that's kind of catchy, right? I can slide them in different compartments. I can stack a bunch of these wherever I need them and see exactly what's in there. I can have my 132nd ounce, my 116th, my 164th, my hair jigs, my tungsten jigs, whatever I want inside these boxes. And they come in a variety of sizes. Here's a skinnier, smaller one that I use for my ice jigs. Again, they're not big. I can store them wherever I want, and I have things I can see quick, organized, neat, and accessible. That's the name of the game. I want more time fishing. I want more time with the rod in my hand and less time looking for jigs. And I don't want my jigs to get beat up. These don't fall out. So my paint's not getting chipped up. They're not banging against each other. I'm not dulling the hooks. They are in a lean, mean fighting machine position so I can chase down these fish. Storing that stuff is super important. So a lot of great options out there. I'm gonna focus on, like I said, right away, I'm gonna be fishing probably an ultra light to a light action seven to seven, six rod. I'm probably gonna fish some four pound test monofilament or maybe a copolymer. And then I'm gonna use a 1000 series reel. And then I'm gonna fish anywhere from a 164th ounce tungsten ice jig to a 132nd ounce 
one of these new drop TG jigs. That's probably how I'm gonna start the season. I'm gonna focus on the warmest water in the lake. This is where temperature becomes a very important role in fishing. I am paying attention to my Lowrance and looking at what that temperature tells me because that's gonna be where the fish are. The warmer the water, the better likelihood you're gonna have of fish holding in those situations. They're gonna find some of the warmest water they can right when the ice comes off. I'm also gonna pay attention to my electronics and look for any more of these schooling basin fish, schooling fish in the weed lines. I'm gonna think about where I just got done fishing Oh, ice fishing and relate that to where I start my open water season. These fish generally don't make massive moves right away because the water temps are just teetering in those low 40 degree water temps. It's cold. Once the water temps start to get into the upper 40s and start to hit that 50 degree range, these fish will make some pretty expansive moves into little creeks and channels, back bays, boat harbors, whatever it might be. We're not going to be there quite yet when the ice comes off. These fish are still going to be relatively in their same haunts. You caught them on remember here late ice. So those are some of the tips and tidbits I want you to focus on. Again, think about tungsten and open water as well. It has a lot of characteristics to help you catch more fish in the boat. Remember how you store your stuff. Think about fishing hair, all that kinds of stuff. Bring your ice fishing jigs with you, whether it's your small ice tungsten jigs, whether it's your spoons, whether it's your Mackie, your ice finesse plastics, bring that stuff in the boat. Don't start thinking big. Don't walk down the open water crappie aisle right away and think that's what you gotta be fishing because it's open water. Don't put away the ice jigs. Go big or go small, catch bigger fish. That's the name of the game right away at open water. So I'm excited for it. Man, it feels good outside. We're gonna get some rain, gonna get maybe even a little more snow here, I'm sure. And then we're gonna be looking at open water head on once these lakes start to open up. Get the gear organized in the garage, start thinking about it. It's going to be here before you know it. Go out there, catch some fish, have some fun, be safe.